Attorney General William Barr releasing a four-page summary of Robert Mueller's findings and setting the stage for the next political battle in Washington, a growing debate now playing out on when exactly lawmakers and the American public will see the full Mueller report. Joining me now is Trey Gowdy, former chairman of the House Oversight Committee and a Fox News contributor. So um, there has been this debate about how could somebody like Bill Barr actually read um, a 300-page document and summarize it in 48 hours. You tell me. You're a lawyer. That's possible, right? Uh, it's more than possible. I mean, he's actually a smart lawyer. I'm not. <laughs> uh, I, I probably could read 300 pages in a weekend, but Bill Barr definitely can. And you know, it's not like you're summarizing something that's really complicated. Do you have sufficient evidence upon which to charge people with conspiracy, collusion, coordination, whatever you want to call it? And then the other summary, which people oftentimes forget about, what did Russia do to this country in 2016? He summarized it. I'm quite certain he read it. He's a mm -hmm. really, really smart guy, which is something that should give all of us confidence. 300 pages um, is not that much. Do you... Um I understand some Democrats point that if the shoe were on the other foot, right, would you, when you were back on the committee, would you have accepted a four page summary from Eric Holder, for example, without further information? And you would probably demand all of the report as well. Uh, I would try, but I would also understand, as I did, when Eric Holder and, and James Cole, his dag, wouldn't even answer questions. I mean, keep in mind that the Department of Justice speaks in indictments. They don't write biographies. They don't write uh, reports on people. They don't do oppo research. They issue indictments. Mm -hmm. So if I were to ask Eric Holder or Dag James Cole, why didn't you indict this person? Yeah. They wouldn't answer the question. They don't have to answer it. That's, that's a great, it's a great point. Also yesterday, the House Republicans on the Intelligence Committee banded together and they said that Adam Schiff, the uh, chairman of the Intel Committee on the Democratic side, that he should resign. Here's a response from Congressman Ro Khanna. Listen to this. Adam Schiff shouldn't resign. Look, we have a separation of powers. That's part of the Constitution. You have strong oversight. And the president who can stand up to Xi Jinping can take Congress's oversight or a robust press. So let's move on. Let's figure out uh, things we can come together on. We know the Russians interfered. Put aside President Trump. I was talking to Kevin McCarthy. I said, how do we prevent further interference? What do you make of the uh, Republicans asking Adam Schiff to resign? Well, Dana, this... You know, it's hard to get on the House Intelligence Committee, at least on the Republican side. Paul and Kevin don't pick members of the bomb-throwing caucus or the crazy caucus. I mean, you've got Elise Stefanik, who's a national security expert, Conaway, Mike Conaway, former chairman of ethics, Will Hurd, who was a CIA employee, yep. Johnny Radcliffe, a U.S. attorney, terrorism expert. I mean, these are not members of the bomb-throwing caucus. And for them to say, Adam Schiff, we have lost confidence in your leadership, I tell you, I think what's going to happen next, Dana, is the intelligence community is going to say, you know what, Adam, you disregard the information that you're provided. You prejudge the outcome of investigations. You have the president not just indicted, but in jail. We're going to stop sharing information with you. If you are the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee and you can't act in a reasonable way, we're going to stop sharing information with you, in which case Pelosi will have no choice but to mm. replace Schiff and look, the mm. next in line is Jim Himes, who's every bit as progressive. He's just a lot more reasonable and than Adam maybe Schiff responsible, is. responsible with information. I have one last quick question for you. There was this text message that was revealed um, from Page, of course, you remember Lisa Page, to McCabe yes, on, the sixth, on the 12th of December of 2016, saying, by the way, D&I, James Clapper, told Pete that he, Clapper, was meeting with the CIA director and his deputy for dinner tonight. Just FYI, um, FYI, basically, for your situational awareness. And McCabe says, okay. Thoughts on that? We, we've been yeah. waiting to find out what it was this insurance policy that they were talking about. Yeah, we, we actually looked into that, Dana. I think it's really important. That was December of 2016, right? Yes, yes. Which is exactly when the intelligence community was drafting their assessment. Remember, they released a, 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 an assessment mm -hmm. of what happened in 2016, and Brennan insisted that the dossier material be included in the assessment. Therefore, when it's leaked, the public has information about the dossier in great detail. So we looked into that meeting. I don't think we found anything untoward with that dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but Brennan was an active participant in disseminating this dossier information in the fall of 2016 
to put a cloud over the president before he ever became president. Right. Trey Gowdy, it's a pleasure to have you as a Fox News contributor. We appreciate you coming on today. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.